Hello and welcome to this premier edition of Focus on the Future. I'm Council Chair Derek Leon Davis and I thank you for tuning in. We are moving forward with purpose in Prince George's County for a quality of life that brings us better schools, better health care, better transportation options, and new jobs and new businesses. My special guest for this premier edition of Focus on the Future will discuss housing, an issue that touches everyone in Prince George's County. I invite you to stay tuned. Focus on the Future comes your way in just a moment. Hey, look, it's those guys. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Welcome to Focus on the Future, a production of the Prince George's County Council. We're breaking new ground every day in Prince George's County, doing big things on purpose and celebrating major projects like the Regional Medical Center, new places to live, work, shop, and play, and the expansion of National Harbor. We're enhancing our quality of life and on our way to becoming the region's next economic powerhouse. This is Focus on the Future with your host, Council Chairman Derek Leon Davis. Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the premier edition of Focus on the Future. This program is a production of the Prince George's County Council. I'm your host, Council Chair Derek Leon Davis. On this edition of Focus on the Future, we are discussing the important issue of housing and how we are working to meet the county's current and future housing needs. I'm pleased to introduce my first guest for this conversation, Eric Brown, Director of the County's Department of Housing and Community Development. Welcome to this very first edition of Focus on the Future. I'm excited you could have joined us. Mr. Brown, how are you been? I've been great, sir. Great, great, great. Tell the people uh, who are listening, what exactly are the responsibilities of the County's Department of Housing and Community Development? The Department of Housing and Community Development, primary responsibility is to establish and carry out policies for economic development, I mean for community development, and improve general conditions in, 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 our, uh, in our county. Uh, we have three different agencies that work together to make sure that happen in terms of uh, making sure that we do redevelopment in some of our older communities. Uh, we provide community development block grant that helps a, no, a lot of the neighborhood groups and community-based groups in the county. And we primarily gear that toward serving low and moderate income people. But overall, the idea is to improve the general quality of life uh, for people in Prince George's County, but you know if you don't have good housing, you don't have a good quality of life. How about that? Housing is a quality of life issue, and it is a growing body of evidence uh, that shows that housing plays a, a distinct role in creating quality of life. Discuss the relationship between quality of life and housing in Prince George's County, and, and take in mind, we just came through a crisis of foreclosure, mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of talk about the foreclosure crisis and its impact on Prince George's County and specific in the state of Maryland. Um, the relationship between the two things, how does it work? I think the, the, the relationship is that once you're able to improve a person's housing situation, they're able to concentrate on other things and improve their general quality of life. If you're spending all of your time looking for housing and don't have it, you don't take care of your health and you don't take care of your family. So once that's settled, then you're able to, to, to do better in terms of your overall health. There, there are documented studies that show that when a family's housing situation is better, their health is better. You, when you're able to pay for your housing and you're able to pay for it not being overburdened, then you are able to spend more money on health care and other kind of family needs. With respect to the foreclosure issue, we have been dealing with this since we've been here in Prince George's County since this administration started, and we have been focused on three things. Those three things include stabilizing neighborhoods, targeting the most uh, impacted areas of the county to make sure that we can make a difference and sort of ebb the tide of foreclosures. 
Some of the things we have done is uh, we had down payment assistance and closing costs that we partnered with the state. And out of that particular program, what was amazing that happened, we had 385 families, new families that became homeowners through this program. And 75% of those families went into those 14 areas that we thought was most impacted by foreclosures. And then that tied itself to improving the general condition of the housing market in the, in the county. And if you look at the general condition of the housing market in the county, you will see that it has improved uh, dramatically over the last couple of years. And right now, the medium sales price of a house in Prince George's County is about $245,000. That's up substantially. Wow, so sounds like we, as the recession took hold and as the foreclosure crisis took hold, sounds like we're in a period of recovery. Sounds like we're getting to a point where we're starting to stabilize somewhat. Yeah. And we know after we stabilize, we begin that trek upward. Mm -hmm. So where is the housing market now in the county? And are property values starting to move in a positive direction? They are. Um, property values are starting to move up. As I said earlier, the medium sales price of a house is up to, uh, to 240 $245,000 as of last month. Now that's up uh, quite a bit, uh, approximately 6.8% over this time last year. Uh, so the other thing that we're beginning to see is that the, the, the assessed value of homes, the, the tax value of, of homes is beginning to increase in Prince George's County. And then this county had the greatest increase of any other jurisdiction in the county in terms of assessed property tax value, which is great for, for the county. Right, Prince George's County, we're in, a, we're in a unique area in the Washington metropolitan region, and we know that our neighbors uh, to the west and east of us, Montgomery County and, and, and Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia, they often uh, leap forward during these times of challenge when we come out of recessions and we begin recoveries. Prince George's County often um, lags behind. What are some of the unique housing challenges that we might have here in Prince George's County? Well, one of, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people would point to that, you know, Montgomery County is doing better in this and Montgomery County is doing better in that in terms of the housing market. But when you think about it, Prince George's County had farther to come than any of the other jurisdictions. And I'm really, really proud of where we have come. And I won't, won't be won't say that we are completely out of the woods, but we have made significant progress. Some of the unique things that's affecting us is our ability to is, is continue to mitigate uh, the impact of foreclosure. So that means that we still have to focus on that and stabilizing neighborhoods. The other thing is that we need to focus on in Prince George's County is the idea of affordability making sure that there is an adequate supply of affordable housing. There will be a need uh, for more affordable housing as we move forward in Prince George's County, particularly when you look at some of the economic boom that's taking place. If you take, for example, the, the great work that, that uh, was happening down at National Harbor in terms of the casino that will be opening later this year, the people that's going to be working at the casino are going to need places to stay that's close to the casino. So that's, that's something that we're going to have to think about as we move forward and develop housing policy as, uh, as we move <coughs> forward. And, and that, that, that's one of the reasons that in our conversations over many years, we've talked about the comprehensive nature of housing, how transportation impacts housing, mm -hmm. how economic development centers impact the need for housing, how they work together synergistically to provide an opportunity for everyone mm -hmm. to have quality pla quality place to live. <clears throat> As a council, we're starting to work with other stakeholders to develop a comprehensive housing strategy. How will this comprehensive strategy help us respond to the, the county's needs that we just talked about? I think this is going to play a, uh, a very important and major role in terms of how we move forward with housing policies and issues in the county. And this, doing it comprehensively, looking at it not just in terms of affordable housing, but looking at it in terms of housing for people at all economic and income levels. Being able to focus on um, 
what our region partners and the role that Prince George's County play in the region. And re Prince George's County does and has and will continue to play a major role in terms of housing. And also understanding that housing is a strategic part of economic development. Because if people don't have the right place to live in the right places, then that sort of stymies your economic development. So all of that goes hand in hand in terms of your ability to be able to move economic development apart. So this, this strategy is a critical part of that. You know, I heard a harrowing story at a, a, a town hall meeting of a young lady who couldn't find a way to the job that she got on the National Harbor, and largely because the transportation arteries start at a certain time, stop at a certain time. Her job didn't necessarily understand that the time that she needed to work and the time that she needed to leave would coincide. And so we started to understand more and more how transportation impacts housing, how housing impacts economic development, how all of these things come together. And so we put together a, a strategy. This comprehensive housing strategy is going to be worked on by the county council through the merging kind of two committees. Mm -hmm. We have one committee on planning, zoning, and economic development, and then we have a, another committee on transportation, housing, and the environment. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to do a, a merger of sorts and work with the department and many of the partners that started off at our retreat this year to make uh, to take this holistic approach mm -hmm. and create a synergy for economic development through our housing project. It's about time for the housing fair, isn't it? It is. Uh, we are always excited about the housing fair because it's an opportunity during, during June and this year's housing fair will be June the 11th and usually it is at the Sports and Learning Center. But what's amazing about it is that we're able to bring so many resources to one place that people are able to take advantage of. And in the past, we've had three to 4,000 people come through the housing fair, take advantage of this opportunities. We've had anywhere from 60 to seven vendors and exhibitors at this fair. So we are excited about continuing the fair and then through things that it will present for Prince George's County. When's that date again? June 11, 2016. And it's open for everyone? It's open for everyone. If you think you want to buy a house, if you have a house and want to stay in it, if you want to know about your mortgage, just learning. Everybody is welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Brown. I appreciate your, your candor. I appreciate the opportunity to, for you to share with us and to share with everyone who listens uh, the opportunities for housing in Prince George's County and in this region, in the Washington metropolitan region. They got to watch out because here we come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So it's time for a short break, but stay with us. There is much more to come. We will continue our housing conversation with my next guest from the Council of Governments, Hillary Chapman. Focus on the Future returns in just a moment. Introducing a breakthrough in time management technology. A whole new day of the week. It's called Someday. Ingenious. Perhaps someday you are going to go skydiving. Enter a hot dog eating contest. Maybe ride a mechanical bull. Now it's on the calendar. You may want to retire someday. Ready for that? You'll really want this. A My Social Security account at socialsecurity.gov. You can estimate your future benefits, plan for your retirement, and how to save for it. If you already receive benefits, you can manage them online. Millions of people already have a My Social Security account. In fact, someone opens one about every six seconds. Get yours today, because someday is here at socialsecurity.gov. Welcome back to Focus on the Future, a production of the Prince George's County Council. I'm Council Chair Derek Leon Davis, your host with more of our conversation about housing in Prince George's County. Joining me now to take a look at housing policy in Prince George's and the impact on our region is Hillary Chapman, Program Manager for the Mer Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Thank you for being my guest for this segment of Focus on the Future. 
So please share with our viewers uh, how you got interested in the area of housing, a little about your career path at the Re Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Well, thank, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be Thanks. here with you today. Um, I think un unlike perhaps uh, some people who knew from an early age, this is what I'm going to do in my life and, you know, sort of pursued it. Um, for me, it was a little bit uh, uh, indirect. Um, I studied city planning in graduate school. Um, I think I got interested in that because of growing up in a very rural area. So it was an, an intriguing, um, the notion of communities and building communities and how to do that was of uh, real interest to me. And, um, and uh, the opportunity to work on affordable housing to make communities better um, sort of was a natural um, uh, outgrowth for that. So, and I spent some time working as an affordable housing developer okay. um, before coming to the Council of Governments. Um, it was a great opportunity to, to really look uh, more holistically um, about uh, an area and a region that is my home and I care a great deal about. Yeah, we, we, love, we love home and it's great when you mm -hmm. go out, get a skill, bring it back home and use it. But I want to thank you immensely for participating in our annual retreat, the council retreat, where we started our discussion on housing policy in Prince George's County. In your view, how does our work to develop a comprehensive housing strategy in the county impact housing efforts in this region? Well, I can't underestimate how important um, the actions that um, and the policy developments and Prince George's County has uh, to the region as a whole. Um, you know, the, the need, unfortunately, is so great uh, for housing um, in our region. There's no one jurisdiction that can solve the problem alone. Um, it really takes uh, all of us working together um, to, to address, uh, to be able to meet the needs of, needs of all of the residents um, in our region. So the development in Prince George's County of a comprehensive ho housing strategy uh, will not just benefit the residents here, and that's, that's really critical, um, um, but you're also supporting your partners in uh, your council representatives in Montgomery, in the District of Columbia, in Arlington County, uh, in Fairfax County, um, it bolsters their commitments, um, and it and it shows that you're you're you know willing to, um, um, you know su support uh, the outcomes for for everyone who who lives here. So I think that you can um, that this is this is a, this is an action that will redound um, to to uh, more than just uh, the residents here. Um, and I think the other thing that's important to keep in mind is that 50% of the, of the workers in our region cross a jurisdictional boundary right. when they go to work every day. Um, so our housing market and our transportation systems are fundamentally that's regional. Right. They, they have to run together. And when you think mm -hmm. about it from the perspective of the Washington metropolitan region, you have Northern Virginia, Virginia, you have Washington, D.C., you have Prince George's County and Montgomery County. We all border this area that most of the world knows because of Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and how it's a fundamental driver of an economy. And what that economy has with regard to its connections are its housing and its transportation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we often talk about transportation. I remember the long conversation conversations about the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. We're often mm -hmm. talking about the Purple Line. We're often talking about WMATA. We see today in the news in most situations what we have to do with regard to Metro. You know, we, we, we see how this works. And we rarely talk about the housing situation. You know, we, housing just happens, it seems. Mm -hmm. so, so, so describe to me some of the critical housing needs in this area right now, in the, in the metropolitan area right now. So when we, when we think about housing needs throughout the region, um, we really want to look at it across the, the spectrum. So, so to those residents who, are, um, who ha are the most vulnerable and have the greatest needs, you know, all the way down, to, you know, all the way to the other end of the spectrum to, you know, sort of wealthy homeowners. We want, we want a place for everyone. Everyone has, uh, you know, we want everyone to have an opportunity, you know, to live and be a part of this um, really incredible region. So, uh, but in the, um, but the needs are, but the needs are not insubstantial. Um, Unsubstantial. The the most vulnerable people in our in our ex, um, the most vulnerable residents you know in our region um, with the greatest housing needs are those experiencing homelessness. Um, you know we conduct a point in time count every year um, and it's they're usually about eleven thousand to twelve thousand people experiencing homelessness. Um, uh, you know at a date of that yeah. count um, throughout throughout our region. Um, the most uh, um, vulnerable and those people have um, obviously the, 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 the greatest, greatest need, needs. Yeah. 
Um, the renters are another growing concern in this region because nationwide uh, rents are continuing to rise um, um, at a rate that is um, greater than the, than the growth in, in, um, in incomes. Um, and about half of all renter households in the region have struggled with housing cost burden, including about 150,000 with severe housing cost burden, which means that they're paying more than 50% of their income um, to, to rent. And, and the, the number of people, the number of renters with a severe housing cost burden in Prince George's County really pretty closely mirrors that in the region. Um, those with extremely low income, so meaning those family, a family of four that earns about $31,000 annually. Um, you know, about 88% of those households in Prince George's County are severely cost burdens, and about 86% um, um, in the region. Um, Furman Center in New York City just did a recent study and found that the rental supply grew between 2006 and 2014. In our metropolitan Washington region, uh, about 25%, but the, um, so the rental supply grew 25%, but the renter population grew by 35%. So the need, uh, the renters are growing faster than the supply. Um, so okay. the result of that is, you know, vacancy goes down, rents go up, and the number of people per unit also right. um, increases. Um, Unfortunately, the picture is not much greater, better for, for homeowners, um, for those who are uh, actually currently homeowning, um, yeah. either seeking to become a homeowner or already a homeowner. Um, affordability declined between 2000 and 2011 by, um, as housing prices increased uh, by about 32%. Um, that's a, adjusted for inflation. Um, and about 75% of the homes in our region were not affordable to first-time um, homeowner, homeowners between 2009 and, and 2011. So that seems a little, a little awkward from the perspective of the foreclosure crisis mm -hmm. and the decline in values. So, so how does that work together? And, and there was another issue when you, when you were, you were um, um, articulating the answer. Often I hear people talk about how much they spend on housing, and there's a number uh, that is used to describe when you've moved beyond affordability. How does that work together? Sure, if I can um, answer that in two parts. So um, affordability is commonly defined as uh, spending about 30% 30%, of your income okay. per rent. Um, and then 35%, we talk about being cost burdened. Okay. Um, and at 50%, we say you're severely burdened. Okay. So then okay. it, when, when you're spending half of your income or housing right. and you, you can't, you, you know, you, you, you are not able to, to adequately meet your other essential needs. Yeah, well, that's um, what my mom and dad would call house poor. House poor, <laughs> exactly. Well, not just house poor too, but yeah. transportation poor, poor yeah. and you know, f and you think about food insecurity and all and other, and, you know, and other a lot of other very challenging, um, challenging um, issues. Um, you know, in terms of the um, the the homeownership piece and how um, the, the experience of Prince George's County um, as re with regard to the rest of the region. Um, now Prince George's County has, you know, was impacted uh, more That's severely yeah. than, than other jurisdictions in the region around the, the foreclosure um, crisis. Um, but that doesn't mean that homeowners in Prince George's County weren't also cost burdened during that time. So, so the data that I just shared with you um, um, reflects the, the, the number of, of residents, um, including in Prince George's County, who were homeowners at the time of the foreclosure um, crisis, um, and, um, and, and sort of relative to the residents who are currently here, there's, there's still a gap in need, at, at, frankly, at all income levels because of the, the need for more housing. And, and I guess that's what this is all about now. You know, it's about the future and about what we need to do, not only in Prince George's County, but in this region, as we think about housing being affordable at all levels, uh, like we said, from homelessness to estate housing, this region is, is inextricably tied uh, with the federal government as a driver, uh, with the great uh, Potomac River and the East Coast um, as a waterway opportunity, with all of the economic development that going on and our knowledge that transportation and housing are you know tied together to ensure that you know how do you see us working in the future uh, and and not just in Prince George's County but Montgomery County uh, the, the District of Columbia Northern Virginia how, what do you see the needs uh, being in the future for us and with regard to housing 
Um, well, I, I think there's a, there's a, there's a range, uh, there's a range of needs, um, and um, and you know, and working together, I think there, um, you know, this is a, this is a really smart region. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a cutting edge region. We're, we're, we're doing. Um, you know the things that are happening in the metropolitan Washington region are, um, you know, are you know national best practices. Right, right. So uh, we know what we need to do, um, but there's always room for improvement, and there's things that we can do, uh, and there's tools and strategies that we're currently using, you know, that can be strengthened to, to meet that future need. Um, you know, so for for people experiencing homelessness, it's you know providing more opportunities for permanent supportive housing to end chronic homelessness. Um, you know, rapid rehousing um, for those who have face an economic crisis and quickly need um, some housing support. It's um, you know tools that um, um, you know, inclusionary zoning, right? That that um, you know a lot that that um, you know without a lot of, of government expenditures can achieve sort of fair help achieve fair housing goals. It fosters economic integration, provides opportunities. Um, for families to live in, you know, in, in, in neighborhoods with great schools and, and you know, access to transit. Um, you know, there are a number of other, I, I, there are a lot, there are a lot know, of other things I can go on and When you said it, it made funds. me think about our focus in Prince George's County mm -hmm. on transit-oriented development mm -hmm. and the fact that we have 15 metro stations that are great opportunities to kind of pull together the realities of economic development needs, whether they be in Prince George's or anywhere in the region that the uh, metro station can take them. Um, and the uh, actual uh, fact that they haven't been really overdeveloped or underdeveloped over the last 20 years. So we've looked at that as a great opportunity. And I know in other jurisdictions throughout the, the country, uh, transit-oriented development uh, is something that's talked about. And I think we just have a great opportunity here. As you experience in, in, in the region with Washington, D.C. being Washington, D.C., and with Prince George's County, you see the relationship and how we further develop that spectrum of opportunity between housing and transportation? Oh, absolutely. And that's and, and I think you've really hit the nail on the head with with um, you know with in talking about transit oriented development. The the demand for, for walkable, transit oriented um, you know you know neighborhoods that um, um, have you know access access to transit, access to jobs, access to, to entertainment, um, that foster a sense of community the demand for those types of, of, of communities far outstrips um, the, the, the current supply. Um, so there's a tremendous opportunity for Prince George's to capitalize on that desire um, and really transform um, the, some of these, um, these areas to, to meet the, the, the desire of, of, um, of, of residents in the region. Um, and I think that you know, Prince George's County has done a great job in terms of you know, really, really sort of prioritizing some of those key right. metro stops um, you know, on Largo, New Carrollton, Branch right. Avenue, Suitland, um, and Prince George's Plaza to, um, to, to really be intentional um, about, about those uh, types of, of development activities there. And it's kind of funny because when I was first elected, we were talking about housing for millennials. Mm -hmm. And I read an article not too long ago, and it talks about now the baby boomers are starting to retire, and they're looking for the same kind of housing that the millennials, <laughs> we thought we were trying to create right. for millennials. And so now the competition for that housing has, is becoming fierce. And, and now we're starting to see more of the millennials grow to a place where they're looking for their first house with a young so they could begin to cut grass too. Uh, I love it. But it's it's part of being part of a great region. It's part of being uh, a, a a partner with regard to creating opportunities because we know that when we get economic development because we've put together the right things with regard to transportation and housing, we create jobs and everybody needs that opportunity. Well, that's our program for this premiere edition of Focus on the Future. I'm glad you could join me for our important discussion about an issue that impacts all of us in Prince George's County and throughout our region, housing. The council is working to make sure that the county creates a comprehensive housing strategy that responds to many facets of our housing challenges now and in the future. My thanks to Eric Brown, Director of the County's Department of Housing and Community Development, and to Hillary Chapman, the Housing Program Manager with the Council of Governments. That's it for this first edition of Focus on the Future. Thanks to our viewers for tuning in. This program is a production of the Prince George's County Council 
I am Council Chair Derek Leon Davis, your host, and I am focused on the future of Prince George's County.